Hello, this is Pastor Dave Stewart of Destiny Preparation Church, welcoming you to our program, Road to Destiny, brought to you by Destiny Preparation Church. Well, you know, I hate to say this, but the summer is actually winding down. Can you believe it? It's winding down. We're heading uh, almost to the end of August. We've had some great, great things happening here at the church. Excited about all the things that have happened here at the church throughout the summer. It's been a great summer. God has really blessed us. But, you know, we are really now uh, starting to wind down, you know. So we're getting in those last celebration days. But I hope that you will not uh, forsake coming to the house of God. That needs to be a part of who we are. And so it needs to be a part of everything that we do every, all the time, consistently. Remember, consistency is the key to growth and development. Consistency. So don't forsake uh, God and your time with God just because the weather's nice. I know it's Rochester. It only stays that way a certain number of days. But you know what? It, you you got to put God first. It, that's what it's all about. So come and join us here for service at Destiny. We meet here on Sundays, 1130 a.m. You're invited to come and connect up with us here for our service and morning worship. Looking forward to a great, great time this weekend as well as, as usual and looking to see what God is going to do perhaps with you and your family as well. Join us here, 1130, 1405 Lyle Avenue, Destiny Preparation Church. Now let me take you into the Word of God. This is the sermon which continues what I've been sharing with about Pentecost. I've been sharing uh, from Acts chapter 2 about entering into the presence of God. And last week we discussed uh, what it takes to get to the presence of God, to enter into that presence. And this week I want to talk to you about what happens when we get into the presence of God. I pray this is going to bless you all and open your heart and your mind even to consider some new things, expand your heart and your mind to receive what God is calling to you to do and to receive from him. There is a new experience awaiting you at Pentecost at the presence of God. God bless you. I pray this will bless you and I hope we'll see you here at Destiny Preparation Church real soon. When God shows up, there will be a change in the atmosphere. It says there was a sound that came in from heaven of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all of the house. When, when God really comes in, amen, there are times when one person gets touched or another person gets touched. But I'm talking about when the presence comes into the building as a whole, amen, when God begins to move and there's no place to hide because God is everywhere, every pew, every chair, every aisle from the ceiling to the floor. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. When the presence of God fills the building amen something begins to change said there was this sound and then I, I hear I hear somebody giving their their explanation somebody's on the microphone somebody's asking him what happened sir what happened and he says oh I don't know there was all of a sudden there was just this sound that began to show up and then in the midst of the sound all of a sudden something began to fill the whole room amen a room was just about like this the bible said there wasn't 12 up there was 120 people in the upper room can you imagine being tightened up in one room and all of a sudden something begins to fill and circulate through the room I don't know what it is, but I know something's happening. Something is changing. Something's moving around us. I don't know what's going on, but something has changed in the atmosphere. And so there was a sound and then the, it filled the house. And then thirdly, it says there was a physical sign. The Bible says there were cloven tongues of fire that began to show up on top of them. And not only did it show up on top of them, but something happened inside of them because it said they began to speak in tongues. This is what happens when the presence of God truly shows up. Not only will he be around you, but he's going to get down inside of you. He's going to move from the inside out. The power of the Holy Spirit is the power to change you from the inside out. You've got to be ready to let God come on the inside so he can change you from the inside out. The fourth thing that happened, amen, not only was there a physical sign, but there was a spiritual change. Because when God begins to move inside of you, there is a change that happens. These same brothers that were afraid and hiding and running away from whatever the devil was trying to do and didn't know which way to go, all of a sudden there was a change to their character. Instead of being afraid, they were bold. Peter stepped out, amen, when everybody was asking. Listen, nobody was hiding their tongues. <laughs> 
Amen. The, the Bible says that people on the streets all around them heard them. When you have truly something going on with God, you don't care if anybody knows about it. When, when God begins to move in you, you're not going to care anymore. Oh, what do I look like? Make sure I, I, I keep my suit right. I got to make sure that I'm, I'm straight. When God begins to truly move in you, it's not going to matter what you look like anymore. It's not going to matter what, what people think about you. The only thing I care about right now is God is moving inside of me. Hallelujah. God begins to move and there's a spiritual change that begins to happen to them. And, and people begin to ask, what's going on up there? What is it that's happening? What, what, what is changed? What, what is this? These people, amen, these are Galileans. They're speaking all these languages. They're doing all these things. They're making all this noise. Don't you know just a few moments before that they had been in hiding? They didn't want anybody to find them. They didn't want anybody to see them. They were afraid the Romans weren't going to capture them and kill them. But all of a sudden when God began to move, it didn't matter anymore more what people think you need to understand when God moves in you it won't matter anymore what anybody has to say about it it's just between you and God and when God stirs you there is nothing greater that can happen with you there's nothing to run from nothing to hide from but I'll thank him as long as I have breath because I know for myself that he my redeemer lives inside of me come on somebody ought to shout amen if you believe it today said they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And I want you to understand that there was a direct connection here, amen, between now them and God. God promised them, Jesus promised them that there was going to be a change in them, that there was going to be a transition. And here you find now there's this transition that takes place. There's a promise that's being answered here. Amen. In verse 12 of the chapter, they ask the question, what does this mean? What is this that's going on? What, what is happening? What is changing here? And then in verse 16 and 17, we find that Peter speaks to them and says, this is that which was promised by the prophet Joel. In the last day, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. These men that had been afraid, that had been wondering, now all of a sudden had spiritual understanding and knowledge and were declaring from the scriptures this is what we've been waiting for listen for 10 days they waited and didn't know what they were waiting for but when the power of God came there was no more question this is it this is what we've been waiting for this is what God promised I didn't understand what it was going to do to me I didn't understand how it was going to feel I didn't understand what was going to change but now that it's here nobody can tell me anything else I know that God's presence is with me Something about the power of God when it comes. Listen, our God is not dead. Our God is alive. We're talking about a living God. We're talking about a live God. When he comes, there is going to be a change. Nobody's going to have to tell you. It didn't just fly past you and you didn't know it. Amen. Oh, that was it. That was him. No, no, no. Our God is alive. And when he begins to move on the inside, listen, you're going to know it's him. <laughs> you're going to know that's not me anymore. No, that, that, that's not me. I remember that story. Amen. Shirley Caesar used to talk about, amen, about her, her brother, amen, playing church. And they were talking about playing church and her playing church outside and pretending to be like this one and that one. And all of a sudden the, she tells a story that she was beginning to praise God, amen, and doing the normal thing, but something got a hold of her and she began to run around and her, 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 her siblings went in to tell mom, mom, Shirley's out there playing church again. And mom looked out there and said, she ain't playing this time because there's something that got a hold of her where it's no longer just about the motions it's not just about what we do but when God moves in you it's going to change you and nobody is going to be able to tell you what it is or isn't you're going to know for yourself it's a fulfillment of a promise Jesus promised it was coming in Acts chapter 1. He said it's coming. You got to wait for the promise of the Father. Go back to Jerusalem and wait. The promise is going to come. What is this? Why are we waiting? He says ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come. You need power to do what God would have you to do. You need power to be what God would have you to be. Thank God for the blood that washes you clean, but the empowerment comes from the Holy Spirit. That's why you need the Holy Spirit in your life. It's not enough. Let me tell you, it's not enough just to be saved. Because if that's all it was, you'd go on to heaven right now. But in order for you to live the life that God would have you to live, well, you can try and be good. 
you can try and behave. And some like, Lord knows there are times we, we do that and times we mess that up. But if you truly want to be changed, you've got to be changed by something that has more is more powerful than you. You've got to be changed back into the image of God. And that can only happen from the inside out. And so the promise of the father comes to us that God says he's going to give us something that's going to help us to change. I want you to see this from Jeremiah chapter 31. It was a promise of Jesus. And Jesus said it was a promise of the father in Jeremiah chapter 31. 31 and verse 31, God spoke to his people. He says, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. What was wrong with the old covenant? We'll get to that in a minute. He says, I'm going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not according to the covenant I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they broke. Although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. Verse 33 says, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. What was wrong with the old covenant? What was wrong with the covenant of bulls and sacrifices of lambs? What was wrong with what they had done for so many years and centuries in pouring out, amen, sacrifices for their sins that the, even God himself said, there was a there was a there was a frailty with that there was a failure in it why because he said they kept on breaking it even though I told them how to get straight they kept messing up think about yourself trying to live for God and even though you tried to do right how many times do you keep on messing it up Amen. So it's one thing to be washed and, and, and delivered from the, the price of our sins, but it's another thing to be changed so that we stop sinning. And that's what the power of God comes to do. Look in Hebrews chapter 8. It picks up on the same scripture, but it gives us even more detail. I'm not going to read it all. Amen. But pre previously it talks about Jesus versus the prophets of the old time. And it picks it up in verse 6 about Jesus it says, but now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry. Speaking of Jesus. By how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, a new covenant, a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, what was wrong with the first one? If the first one had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. If the first one was all right, you didn't need a second one. But because there were issues with the first one, he made a second one through Jesus Christ. Verse 8, for finding fault with them, listen, he saith, behold, the days come. These words should sound familiar. The days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not saith the Lord for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days saith the Lord I will put my laws where in their mind and write them in their hearts and I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people understand that he is quoting here exactly what Jeremiah prophesied He's saying that the new covenant through Christ is the fulfillment of the promise that was made by Jesus Christ. The old covenant only went so far. It's the new covenant, amen, that, that, that takes us to our next level. And what is it about the new covenant that takes us there? Jesus, first of all, was a sacrifice once and for all for all the sins. No more sacrificing. No more lambs. No more bulls. But this is what's important. Because of what Jesus did for us, now we're able to receive the presence of God. In the Old Testament, every time you turned around, you were back in sin and God had to stay away from sin. He could not enter you because every time you turned around, you had sin in you and you would have you would have revoked the presence of the power of God. But because of what Jesus has done once and for all, you have been set free for sin. That's why the presence of God can now live in you. Well, you don't always have everything right, but thank God for the blood. 
You're not always straight, but thank God for the presence of the blood of Jesus that allows the Holy Spirit to be there even when you're thinking the wrong thing, even when you're turning in the wrong direction. Now he can stay there and guide you. Don't think that way, brother. You better turn from that. That's not where you need to go. You need to turn in a different direction. Listen to the voice of God. He's come to change you from the inside out. The Bible says he'll lead and guide you. He comes to instruct you and remind you of things that you already know. You need the presence of God in you to get right. It's a better covenant because not only does it set you free, but enables you to be what God would have you to be. It's the way that you can become the body of Christ. It's the way that you can become what God ordained for you to be. It's the way for you to stand up and be right because the presence of God will change you from the inside out. Listen, the presence of God is alive. It's alive. Somebody say it's alive. It's a live presence. It's a living presence. It's not dead. It's not dormant. It's, it's a power of God. And when God's presence comes into you, he moves. The Bible said he filled the room. When God's presence came, it filled the room. It wasn't just an animate. It wasn't just sitting somewhere watching or being watched. It filled the room. Everybody knew something was changing in that room. Everybody knew something was different in that room. Not only does he fill the room, but he is felt. When God's presence comes through, you will feel a change because of the presence of God. Amen. I've had people say, amen, they come into a service and they may not understand what it was, but I felt something going on in there. I, I don't know what it was, but something felt different in there. Sometimes you walk in and you can feel the atmosphere right when you come in. There's an anointing that will hit you at the door. There's something moving. There's something going on there because God's presence can be felt. And not only that, but God's presence will produce change. He will change your situation. He will change you. He will make physical changes. He will make spiritual changes. You will be changed from the inside out when the presence of God comes. Listen to this. You can believe in God without his presence, but you cannot touch God without his presence. I want you to think about that for a moment. You can believe in God without his presence, but you can't touch him without his presence. There are a lot of people today that believe in God. You don't need the presence of God in you to believe in him. But if you want to touch him, you need the presence of God inside of you. That's the way you connect with him. That's the way you interact with him. That's the way he can change you. He can direct you. He can move in you by allowing God's presence to fill you. Peter said in the book of Acts, he said, the promise is unto you and to your children, as many as the Lord God shall call. This promise of the presence of God was not just for that one day, but this promise is unto you today. Today, God is still filling people with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Today, God is still moving off his throne to connect up with you. Today, God is still stirring in people's hearts. Today, God is still changing the atmosphere. But it comes when we have a a, a, a passion, a desire for his presence. The Bible says when they came in one accord, in one place, that's when he suddenly came. But as long as we're satisfied without his presence, he's not coming for people who don't want him. He's coming for those who are passionate for him, that desire something more for him. He's not coming just for those who believe in him. The Bible says even the devil believes in him. He's not coming just because you believe. He's becoming because you desire the presence of God. There's something about setting an atmosphere of anticipation. When we set the atmosphere that, 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 that wants something, when you come to the presence of God and anticipating, you see, there are two ways to come to, the, to, to church. You can come to the church to see what's going to happen. Or you can come to church because you want to make something happen. A lot of people just come to see. I just want to see what they do over here. See what's going to happen today. I'm see what's going what, what's going what's going to go down. See who's going to do what. God doesn't respond to the observer mentality. He doesn't come to see who's watching. 
He comes to see who's calling. The Bible says he desires true worship and true worshipers. That's where he wants to show up. That's where he wants to be. We have to be in a mindset of passion for him and anticipation. I, I, we ought to be in a mindset every week coming through that door. Listen, I just want to see what God's going to do today. I just want to see where God's going to take me. I want to see what he's going to say. What does God have in store for me? I, I need something. That When you get hungry for something, that's when you really get passionate about it, right? I, I, I need something. I Look, I got to move some stuff. I got to change some stuff around because it's time for me to eat. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Some stuff got to wait because it's eating time. I'm hungry right now. I need to satisfy this desire before I can do anything else. When you come to God with that spiritual mindset and attitude that, God, I want what you've got for me, and I'm hungry for it, and I'm anticipating it, that's when the presence of God shows up. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, the Beatitudes. It says, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Hunger and thirst. David said, as the deer panteth for the water, so my, lo- my soul longeth after thee. It is one thing to know about God. It's a whole other thing to pan after him. Think about it, that deer just thirsty enough where it can barely even just keep just parched with thirst. I, I need my thirst to be filled. Anybody ever had been experienced where you needed God to parch your, to satisfy your thirst? Where you just like, look, I just can't do this no more. I just can't go any further. I, I just, nothing else matters but being, getting some satisfaction from the presence of God. As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longs after thee. That's where God shows up when people are hungry enough for him to pan after him, to know there's nothing else that will satisfy and satisfy your quench of thirst but the presence of God. That's the atmosphere. In which God shows up. That's when God will respond. He says if my people. Call by my name. Hunger themselves. Hunger will seek my face. Seek my face. That's what he wants. Is the people that are are seeking after him. Not just showing up for the entertainment section. Not just there because this is what we do. We go to church on Sundays. Not just following out a format or whatever we normally traditionally would do, but have a hunger for something more. And I dare you to come in every week, no matter what you get, to come back for more and see if God won't do it. I I thought I did pretty good last week, but oh my God, what happened this week? And I can highly wait to see what, what, what's, what's showing up next week. Because, God, I want to get higher up that mountain. I'm at Mount Sinai. I'm at the presence. But I want to go higher into the presence of where you are. I want to be where you are. Hallelujah. That's the presence. That's the atmosphere that God shows up in. That's what God would do. And listen, you don't have to be preached up into it. You don't have to be shouted up into it, stirred up into it. You just have to have the heart for it. When your desire is there, that's where God will show up. And that's where God will change situations in your life. And let me just warn you this, because when the devil sees you trying to get up that mountain, he's going to throw all kind of distractions and hindrances in your way. As soon as you turn towards that mountain, he will set your house on fire, blood of Jesus. He will turn your family against each other. He will cause mess. Your car stopped running. I was coming to church today, but the car wouldn't start. I was coming to church, but something happened to my clothes. I was coming to church today, but all of a sudden I had to deal with this. This problem came up. This mess happened. I, they called me in the work. This situation, that, the other. The devil will throw distractions and hindrances in your way. Man, I wanted to praise God today, but I'm so mad at that so-and-so. I don't know. I can't even get a praise out right now. They done made me so upset. They done frustrated me. They got my eyes all red. How am I going to praise God with red eyes? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Distractions, hindrances. He will throw them in the way. You got to let them all go. The Bible says, cast your cares upon him, for he cares upon you. You've got to let it all go. You've got to put it at the altar, put it at his feet. If there's any place, listen, you should be able to come and let it go. Because I know you've struggled with it for six days. I know you've struggled with it 24 hours. I know that you've, you've, you've 
push and press your way through and try to achieve and handle and deal. But if there's any place you can come in and say, okay, time to put it down. Hallelujah. It's in the presence of God. Let him begin to take over and do with you what you need to do. And you know what? You mess around, you turn around after God messes with you and you look to try and pick that stuff up again and it'll be gone because God has handled it. God has taken care of it. And even when the thing is still there, the problem has already been handled. Even when the person is waiting for you outside the door, they don't mean nothing no more because God has already fixed it in me. So you blow as much as you want to blow. Do what you want to do. You got to take it, take it. You going to cause a fuss, whatever. Whatever you take, I can see the presence of the Lord pouring right back in its place, filling the gap, filling it up, filling it up. Come on, won't he do it? He will fill it up. Whatever the devil tries to take, he's going to fill it up with something better. Take the old car away. It's just ragged anyway because God's about to bring something better in here. Amen? Hallelujah. God's going to do works and wonders and miracles for his people because God is faithful. And when we place it at the altar... God knows how to take care of it.